A few weeks ago, I was having lunch with a Jewish friend in New York. He's a musical therapist who works mainly with elderly patients who are invalid or dying. I have a serious question to ask you, he said. How do you deal with the problem of suffering? I took a bite of my sandwich and asked, what do you mean? I mean, he said, how can people have faith in a world like this? I raised my eyebrows and continued to chew as if waiting for further explanation. My father barely escaped the Holocaust, he said. He was living in a town in France where Hitler's troops rounded up all the Jews and sent them to the death camps. Fortunately, father was away on a trip that day and learned what had happened so he didn't return. He escaped, but most of my relatives didn't. I thought about that while he came to his punchline. How can you have faith in a God who permits that kind of evil and suffering in the world? I admit, I didn't know how to answer his question without sounding either facile or merely superficial. It was a revelation to me that he had lost a lot of relatives in the Holocaust. I needed more time to think because it was indeed a serious question. I promised that I would consider the matter and get back to him. When I got home, I had a letter from a minister friend in Arkansas. It began with the words, I hate the book of Job. I understood immediately what this friend meant. He has a terrible disease. Sometimes the medication he takes for it works and sometimes it doesn't. The doctors frequently change his medications. As a result, his life is always up and down. Some days he feels good, many days he doesn't. Physically, he's still strong. He's only 55 years old. But often the medications destroy his sense of balance and upset his nervous system. His feelings, understandably, bounce around like a bunch of ping pong balls on steroids. He has personal problems too. He and his wife divorced a couple of years ago. He had to give up his calling as a minister. And his physical problem has prevented his finding other work. He can barely live on his disability pay, and yet his wife, who makes a good salary, keeps asking for more money. His only son has been overseas for months, acting in a play, and rarely communicates except when he needs something. My friend's mind is alert and imaginative, but he hasn't found anything to apply it to. I can see why he wrote, I hate the book of Job. He didn't, he didn't like identifying with Job, the man with all those troubles. He probably doesn't like it that many of us who know him identify him with Job. What he was really saying was, I know I'm like Job. I have more problems than anybody can believe. And yet, I hang on to my faith. I still believe in God. Because he does, he bears his troubles with the best attitude I've ever seen in a troubled man. Sometimes he writes about his sense of God's presence in spite of his terrible condition. Other times he writes about his pilgrimage and how he is searching for the Spirit of God in the wilderness. Either way, he is a man of faith. I knew immediately what I had to tell my Jewish friend. You've got the answer right there in your own Bible, in the book of Job. Faith isn't something you throw out when life isn't going well. Faith is what you hang on to when it isn't. Holocaust or no Holocaust, you go on believing because it's all you can do. Faith is pulling on a rope and knowing there's someone on the other end, even though you're suffering terribly and wondering how you can hold on another day or another minute. Faith is remembering how it was to feel good and hoping you'll feel that way again, if not in this life, then in the next. My wife had a wonderful maiden aunt. We called her Aunt Jen. 
Jen was horribly crippled by arthritis when I met her and joined the family. She lay in bed most of the day, getting up only to walk slowly and painfully to the bathroom. Sometimes when we talked to Jen in her room, she would say, it won't always be this way. Someday I'm going to wake up in heaven and I'm going to run and leap all over the place like a young gazelle. That was faith speaking. It wasn't experience. It wasn't mere hope. It was faith. It was what the Apostle Paul was talking about when he said, faith is the evidence of things not seen. Evidence. That's something that will stand up in court, isn't it? Paul must have seen examples of this to talk that way. He must have been an example himself. A man who gave up his entire career and way of life for Jesus after he encountered him on the road to Damascus who put himself in jeopardy again and again wherever he went, who went to prison for his faith many times, who died for his faith. Evidence. He surely knew what he was talking about. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Faith makes a big difference in how we deal with the harshest of realities in life, doesn't it? when we're crippled with arthritis or having a hard time with our medications, when we've lost a job and can't find another, when our money doesn't quite cover the cost of living from week to week, when cancer shows up in our bodies, or even worse, when it returns after remission, when somebody we love is snatched away from us, when the world is in a mess the way it is now, when life devolves into pain and frustration and humiliation and loss, it makes a huge difference. Somebody sent me a wonderful little email a few weeks ago. It was accompanied by some simple line drawings, but I'm sure you can picture it without the drawings. It was about a woman who was having chemotherapy for cancer and was losing her hair. In the first panel, she'd got up in the morning and looked in the mirror and seen that she had only three hairs left on her head. Hmm, she said, I think I'll braid my hair today. In the second panel, she got up and had only two hairs left. Oh, she said, I think I'll part my hair today. In the third panel, she got up and had only one hair remaining. Oh, good, she said. I think I'll wear my hair in a ponytail today. In the fourth and final panel, she looked in the mirror and all her hair was gone. She was totally bald. Oh, thank God, she said. I don't have to do my hair today. Our attitudes have a lot to do with how we adjust to problems, don't they? This is what my friend was doing when he said, I hate the book of Job. He was looking at his situation philosophically and saying he hated to be in the same position as Job. But in saying it, he was dealing with it. He was identifying with Job's faith and with what Job said when he'd had those great imaginative dreams in which God showed him all those wondrous creatures and asked Job if he could make things like that. Out of the depths of his suffering, Job responded, I had always heard of you with my ears, O God, but now my eyes have really seen you. I repent myself. I bow down before you in worship and humility. And my Jewish friend, well, the evening after we'd had our conversation at lunch about faith, he wrote me regarding something extraordinary that had happened to him later that very afternoon. He'd gone to visit a patient, a woman who was in a convulsive and agitated stage. Her family thought they were losing her. He began gently strumming his guitar and singing some soft lullabies and then some familiar old hymns she knew. Eventually, he said, 
she began to relax. The convulsions stopped. And finally, she opened her eyes and smiled at them and began to respond to her family again. He was greatly moved by the experience because, in a way, you see, it was an answer to the very question he had raised at lunch. How do you have faith in a world like this? You just do. Thank you.